A lot of you said you wanted to work with Clay this year. So guess what? We're going to do it. COVID can't stop us. Um, before we get started with Clay, I want you to be aware of how to set up your workstation. First of all, it's important to know that you don't want to put Clay directly on the surface of a table. Because if you do that, it's probably going to stick to the table and destroy your piece. So you never want to work with clay because the moisture in the clay uh, will stick to a surface, the table surface. So what do you work on? Well, if you're in school, I have a couple options. I have uh, thick canvas cloths, or I, oh, this one's cool. This one is a piece of masonite board with canvas that's adhered to it. That works great. You could use a piece of thicker cardboard, not corrugated. Uh, you could use corrugated, I suppose. I don't, this isn't corrugated, but it doesn't matter. Something a little bit thicker. Or even, even a thicker piece of paper. Not like newspaper. Newspaper is way too thin. The newspaper would easily get picked up by the clay and probably stuck inside the clay. And you don't want paper stuck in your clay because when you go to fire it in the kiln, it would actually catch fire. That's not a good thing. So we don't want to use thin, thin paper. Something, though, different from the surface of the table. Okay, what else do you need? Well, you should have some water, not too much water, but maybe a cup with a little bit of warm, I like warm water best, um, warm water in that cup. And that's gonna be, for a couple purposes, that's gonna be, number one, when your hands work with clay, they dry out and they get feeling very uncomfortable. So often I'll take my fingertips and just dip them in that warm water and just rub that into my hands. You never want your hands to be shiny, shiny, because that's too much water. Just keep them comfortable, keep them semi-moist. Um, also, you're going to use that water when you're creating what we call slip. There are certain stages of clay, um, and we're going to get into those in just a minute. You might want to have a little butter knife or clay knife or um, anything that's not super. Don't use a steak knife, my goodness. Um, something that's not too sharp is something that can cut the clay. Not, you don't need anything sharp to cut clay. Clay is very soft and easily cut. I'm actually just going to work on this canvas piece here. Um, so let's get some clay. I have a very, very cool clay cutter. This is a piece of nylon. And on either end, there's two little sticks. So if I pull the sticks taut and the nylon straight, that actually will cut the clay. I told you you didn't need anything sharp, okay? So I can simply pull that nylon through the clay and that cuts my clay for me. Isn't that cool? Wow. All right, anytime you take clay or anytime I take clay from a bag, I always have to make sure I tuck the bag closed because if I leave it open, the air is getting in and it's drying out. Okay, so when you take clay that's fresh from the factory out of the bag, it is in the plastic stage. That's the second stage listed. And the plastic stage is usually the stage that we build with because the clay is very soft and flexible, bendable, shapeable, moldable, etc. Um, and that's the, the phase that we like the clay to be for the most part. But there's other phases I want you to be aware of. Slip is the clay in its most moist stage or state. And that's basically when you have about 50% clay to about 50% water. If you let some clay soak in water for a while, stir it up, mix it up well, it'll kind of come to a mud consistency, and that is what we call slip. You can't really build with slip so much, but slip is used sometimes for decorative purposes, but more importantly, it's used to adhere two pieces of clay together. So if I had two pieces of plastic clay and I stuck them together, you might think that they're gonna stick when they dry, but the only thing that's holding them together right now is moisture. And when the moisture is gone, the pieces come apart very easily. So you have to learn how to attach pieces of clay together. And I'm going to take two pieces of plastic clay and use slip to attach them so they stay together forever. And I can make slip. I don't have to mix it in advance. You can, and then you have it ready for you. But sometimes I like to make it right on the surfaces of the two pieces I'm going to attach. Let me show you how. You, take, you don't throw a knife. You take a knife and you're going to cut little teeny tiny cuts into the surface of the clay. Lots and lots of little teeny tiny cuts. Lots and lots. If you can count how many, then you didn't do enough. So when you make a little cut, it's called scoring the clay. So I'm scoring the clay. 
And then I'm going to put some water into those little teeny cuts and grooves. I'm using my finger. Sometimes I dip the tip of the knife in. Sometimes it works. Um, and cut again in every different direction. Not too deep, just the surface. Just score the surface. And when it starts to get gooey, the gooey stuff is called slip. I'm going to do this one too. So if you're trying to attach two pieces of clay together, both pieces where they attach have to have the little cuts that we call score, score the clay, and the water in those cuts mixed in, and then it gets gooey, and the gooey stuff is called slip, again, these are terms you should know. So when you attach two pieces of clay, one of the terms that people will say is slip and score, or score and slip, that's exactly what I'm doing. Score is to cut, slip is the goo. Once you get that gooey stuff on both pieces, Okay. Then you can gently push, push and twist them together. And if you have slip in between and you've scored well, those two pieces, when this dries, will never come apart. Okay. Not like they don't just easily pull apart. Even now, they don't easily pull apart. So you have to use slip if you want to ensure that two pieces of clay, plastic clay, stay together forever. Okay. Um, once you've made something out of clay, and you keep it in a bag. Usually when you're building something, you always keep it in a plastic bag until you're done. Because if you don't keep it in a plastic bag in between work sessions, then your clay definitely will dry out on you. And if it dries out on you, you cannot add to it unless you re-moisten the clay. I am throwing clay. Okay, so let's just say I'm gonna pinch a very quick, quick, quick little Japanese pinch pot and this clay start to dry out on me a little bit. So I have this like little pinch bowl and this is plastic clay. It's still plastic, it's still bendable and moldable. But if I were to let this um, start to dry out, maybe in a plastic bag, but because I've worked with it a few days or for a little while, uh, it is starting to dry out on me. But if I left this overnight, it would firm up. Okay, Leather hard clay is clay that will allow you to still do some work to it. You can't really change the shape too much. You can with plastic, okay? But once it's leather hard, you can't really change the shape, but you could like take, say, a pencil or something and do some decorative work, carve into the clay a little bit. It's a little bit um, dry, but it's not totally dry. Then once it's set out for a few days, when you're done building with it, I'm going to just leave it out to dry and then it gets really dry. Like no moisture is left as far as um, what, what we started with in the clay. So. That's called bone dry. When it when a piece is bone dry, it's ready to go in the kiln. But if you put your project in the kiln, which is the like the chamber in which we heat the clay, it's like an oven. Uh, if you put your piece in the kiln before it's bone dry, it has a very high chance of cracking and breaking because there's too much moisture, it's drying out too quickly. So I've just talked about four different stages or phases, the slip, the gooey gooey stuff, the plastic that we tend to work with or want to work with for the most part, leather hard once it's starting to dry and you can still kind of do some things to it, but you can't really, if you force the shape to change when it's leather hard, it's going to probably break on you. And bone dry, you can't change the shape at all. It's dry. It's dry, air dried as much as it can be air dried. So any of these four phases are considered greenware. Green means the, st the clay is still fresh, that it hasn't been fired. And whenever you're dealing with greenware, no matter what stage you're in, you can always achieve any of those stages again. So if I had clay that was bone dry, dried out for a few days, no moisture left as far as I can tell, I could still make that slip again by breaking it up into pieces, putting it into a bag with some water and letting it sit. That clay is gonna absorb the, the moisture, the water, and it can can get back as far as the slip stage. Okay, so this is green work. But once my clay is bone dry and I put it into the kiln, the kiln creates a chemical reaction, a physical reaction, and the consistency of the clay changes. No longer is it green where it's called now once it's fired bisqueware. Hang on, check this out. This is the same clay, okay? Look how dark it is here. That's because there's a lot of moisture in it. This has already been fired in the kiln. This is bisqueware. All the moisture is gone. And there's different types of glazes, or I'm sorry, clays. 
This one is a white clay, but there's um, earthenware clays, brown clays, red clays. I like the white for you guys just because the way that the glazes work on it when we're done. You'll see. You'll see what I'm talking about. Um, but anyways, this has been fired. So, and it's much harder. It still can break, but it's not as fragile as it was when it was bone dry. When it's bone dry, that is the most fragile stage. Sometimes if I look at it wrong, I feel like it's going to break. But once it goes through the kiln and gets fired, then it's, it's called uh, Bisquare, B-I-S-Q-U-E-W-A-R-E. And that, that's pretty stable. Okay. Um, and the, the Bisquare is what we paint our glaze on. And glaze is a liquid glass. And once you paint the glaze on, I think I have one that started here. Oh, this one. Okay. This has glaze painted on it. But see how dull it is? That's because it has to go back in the kiln and get fired. And it, when you fire it, it will melt the glaze into a glass. And the glass is a much shinier surface. Now, if you don't put enough glaze on, when it comes out, you're like, ooh, it's kind of splotchy. I, want, I wish I glazed it better. You can actually reglaze it and pop it back in the kiln. You can fire your piece as many times as you want. I, I prefer that we do a good job the first time, though, so we don't have to use the kiln more than necessary. But there's a lot of different colors of glazes. Last year, when we were all um, kind of remote learning with COVID, um, I came into school and I made these little piglets and each piglet is a different color glaze. I've got a bunch of these. So you can see what the glazes look like once they're melted in the kiln. Because when they first are painted on, they look very different as compared to when they're fired and come out of the kiln. So you can't base what your piece is gonna look like on what the glaze looks like when you first paint the bisquare. You have to like see a tile that shows you, wow, that's what it's gonna melt to. The kiln gets really hot, by the way. The kiln gets to be about 2000 degrees. It takes about eight hours to fire a kiln. It's not like you can turn it on. It's like not like cooking a pizza, right? Eight hours it takes all day. And that thing gets so hot that let's say I start it at say 10 in the morning. If I started it at 10 in the morning, eight hours later, it is what, six o'clock at night? Um, did I do the math right? Nope. Four o'clock. Nope. Six o'clock. I was right. Six o'clock at night. Um, and so it, I can't just open the kiln up at six o'clock at night, six o'clock at night, that thing's still 2000 degrees. So it takes time to cool off. I can think about opening the kiln the next day that I come to school. Um, but usually I have to open it just a little bit at a time and let some of the hot air seep out. If you open a kiln too fast and the cool air gets into it, um, if you have hot and cold, you might know this already, that the clay or the glaze tends to crackle because it creates a, a, a reaction. Like if you took a hot, hot glass out of the dishwasher and put ice cold water in it, there's a very good chance that glass would crack. Don't try this at home. So we have to be cautious unloading the kiln. Usually I'm the one who, I'm the only one who will touch that kiln or for that matter, go in that back room when the kiln's on. No one should ever be in that room when the kiln is on except for one of the art teachers. Okay, um, so the kiln gets hot. Like I said, 2000 degrees. It takes about eight hours to fire that thing. But when the clay comes out, the bisquare gets to be glazed and then it can go back in and come out beautiful once the glaze melts. So um, those are the stages of clay. This is how you set up your workstation. A couple things again, you have to make sure that you keep your clay in a plastic bag as you are storing it in between days when you're building it. But when you're all done building it, do not put it back in the plastic bag. Leave it out on the tabletop to dry. Okay. Now I have seventh grade students working with clay and I have ninth grade students working with clay. Each class is going to have their own unique assignments and you're going to want to stay tuned for specific details and information on what is expected from you with this, this clay project.